The state budget crisis is threatening to cripple state services from public education to transportation improvements. What needs to happen to close the $41 billion deficit, and what are you doing to make that happen? Well, the the first and most important thing that needs to happen is we need to make sure we don't allow the state to run out of cash uh, in early February, which is what's going to happen if we don't put any solutions on the table that both sides can accept. So we're working very hard with the governor and with the Republican caucus on trying to find uh, at least an interim solution. We put $18 billion worth of solutions on the governor's desk a few weeks ago. Unfortunately, he vetoed that package, and we're just going to keep at it. We can either do this on a majority vote basis along the lines of what we've already done in, in the past few weeks, or we can keep working at trying to get three Republican votes in the Assembly, two in the Senate. It really it, it doesn't take much when you think of it that way, but compromise has been hard to get uh, in Sacramento these days. So we'll probably work on both fronts, majority vote and two-thirds, and uh, hopefully we'll get there. But it's the most important question right now. It's why the governor... Uh, kept his State of the State address focused to that single issue uh, when he gave it to us. So far, we've only been able to work on the cut side uh, of the balance sheet, and we have taken some pretty painful cuts already. Uh, We start with an underfunded school system, so any cuts to education, K through 12, as well as higher education, is is hurtful uh, to all of us and certainly to our our economy in the long term. But we'll have to to cut more there. Uh, Human services and our, our social safety net will have to have even more cuts, which is very, very hard mm-hmm. for us to do. Uh, and we've got to start looking at programs like uh, our prison system, where we have very, very wrong-headed and expensive policies that are driving our state further and further into debt. So we need to reform our parole system. We need to stop dumb projects like the expansion of death row. We need to look at some of our rigid sentencing laws that are putting people in prison for the rest of their life for petty, nonviolent third strikes. And hopefully through a combination of those and some revenues that both sides can agree on, we can find $41 billion. It's a tall order. But many people believe the state government has become hopelessly dysfunctional. The Bay Area Council is hosting the California Constitutional Convention Summit in Sacramento next month um, to review, research, discuss, process, and begin building a coalition to support a possible convention and solicit ideas about what should be included in the convention. What's your opinion about that effort, and, and should that go forward? I think it should. I, I, I applaud anything outside the system that starts to address these fundamental questions about how we make California governable. Because right now, I don't need to tell you or your readers if they've been following it, it's hard to argue that the state is governable, uh, especially in this very, very severe fiscal crisis. So I, I support the Constitutional Convention. I think we're going to need you know, many of those deep structural reforms to get the state back on track. Well, the challenge is, as I read the Constitution, that the Constitutional Convention would actually have to be convened by the legislature. So you're really asking the, the folks who right now uh, are at odds with each other to somehow come to agreement on some very, very difficult reforms. Uh, at least for many, they will be difficult. Uh, it may be that we will have to piecemeal our way to reform uh, through the initiative process, and uh, that's... It's hard for me to say because, frankly, I think we already rely too much on the initiative process, but we'll probably have to go that route and tackle some issues like this two-thirds requirement uh, to pass a budget. California is one of only three states in the nation to have it. It's a big part of the gridlock we face every year at budget time. Like the fact that we allow initiatives to pass uh, without any funding mechanism in them. So we're essentially, when when we have these initiatives for wonderful, worthy causes, just handing folks a credit card and not providing the money to pay uh, for either the principal or the interest. Right. We need to fix that. There's a lot of concern locally about the casino that's proposed in Roner Park. Uh, what are you doing and what uh, can be done to stop the uh, casino? Well, I'm doing just about everything I can uh, to stop that casino. I've been very clear on that. Uh, at the legislative level, I'm working on a bill that will provide that when a tribe is proposing an urban casino on land that was not in trust as of, I believe the date will be January 1st of 2008 or somewhere thereabouts, that some additional uh, requirements are in place for the governor to go and negotiate a compact. So there would need to be local support. Now that local support may uh, be able to be shown by an advisory vote along the lines of what's been discussed uh, here in Sonoma County. It may be that some... uh, some series of intergovernmental agreements, as long as you include all of the affected local governments, uh, could 
be adequate to show local support, or it could be a combination of those things. But that's really what I'm interested in, is when you're doing off-reservation gaming, especially in an urban setting, you really ought to have local support from that community.